the Joe Rogan experience. It's like when we when we would do the Opie and Anthony show, mm -hmm. okay? And, or like Howard Stern, like when he would do, back in the day, when he would do live remotes. I love Howard Stern. I love Opie and Anthony. But like if I was a fan of this show, I don't have time and I'm not going to some fucking mall <laughs> in the middle of the day blowing off work or whatever, the because I'm trying to get my own shit going. The people that show up, you love them because they're diehards, but mm -hmm. they're out of their fucking minds. So... Um, it just has to do with that. I'm kind of, um, it doesn't necessarily have to do with me, but it does. It's one of, one of those things. And it's also another way of saying that I'm full of shit. And, yeah, you know, you're a paper tiger. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. So The Opie and Anthony days, you remember when they used to have uh, stadium seating, like small stadium seating in the studio? And guys would come in, the, they would let fans come in the studio yeah. and sit and watch the show. Those are the good old days. Yep. I I, every time I go to New York- I, I there's like it's like a void. Uh, uh, somebody said it perfectly, yeah. like you know, phantom limb. You know, yeah, that's what it feels like. And you get, oh, I'm in New York, and I'm gonna ah, uh. doesn't exist. That was the last show that I used to get up early for. Oh, and, I, and when they were together before Anthony got kicked out, and yeah, and Opie and Jimmy and Anthony were all together. It was amazing. That was that was like seeing a band. With all the original members on the yes. first fucking couple of albums tour yeah. before David Lee goes solo, and then you know, well, they were the first guys a to different get thing. ported over to XM too, right? Mm -hmm. They were the first, or I think they were were they before Howard or around the same time? But they were they were yeah, the was first. The same? I think my name is, they were on that was when it was XM and then Sirius. Mm -hmm. Before yeah, I feel the, like Howard was on Sirius, they were on XM and then they merged. Yep. Yeah. But they were the first show, the first radio show that let you just fuck around. Like, Howard is amazing, right? Greatest radio personality of all time by far. But Howard controlled the show. He had you on. He had the board in front of him. He controlled the board. He asked you yeah. questions. He had an agenda. And, you know, he was trying to make the show as entertaining as possible, and they got ready. Yeah. O and A, you just fuck it. Come on in, guys. Come on in, Patrice. Come on in, Bill. Ari Shafir, have yeah. a seat. And everybody, you'd be in the room. Ricky Gervais, 10 fucking people in the room. Norton, every, Norton would be doing uh, yeah. fucking creepy characters. I mean, it was the, the it was, it was the birth <laughs> for me. Talk Jimmy was my favorite one. Oh, he was. <laughs> Jive Talk Jimmy. Yeah, remember that? Yes. He didn't do it enough. That's like a deep cut Jim Norton. Yeah. Jive Talk Jimmy was one of my favorite ones. Yeah. It was so silly, which is my favorite thing ever. S highly intelligent people being silly yeah. is one of my favorite things ever. And I, I, Jim was the and Patrice was sort of the king of that. Oh, yeah. Super, super, super next level smart and just silly, really silly. I think when Howard went from terrestrial radio to, to Sirius, it was like he died because I didn't have until I got Sirius in my car. So that's like my favorite thing about my car because I listen to them every fucking morning. If I, you know, and I got to get yeah. them, I'm up. And it's like the old days, like when I first came to New York and I get to listen to it. They were the birth of podcasts, whether they re realize it or not. They were the birth of podcasts because ONA was like a podcast, mm -hmm. like this podcast. Like we didn't even talk about what we were going to talk about. There's right. no, no fucking discussion whatsoever. I mean, right. obviously, you and I don't have to do that, right. but we wouldn't anyway. We just come in here and shoot the shit. That's all they ever did. Come on in, right. shoot the shit. What the fuck's going on? You know, Anthony yeah. would have a gun on him. Look, fucking <laughs> show you. <laughs> That's a fucking gun <laughs> everywhere to this day. A guy my doesn't favorite, go to piss in the middle my, of the night without a gun. My uh, favorite deep cut Anthony character was the guy with giantism. Did you ever hear him do that guy? No. Ah, uh, no, he did. I it. can't do it. You know, with the giantism, and they get that voice. You know, by the time I was eight, I was nine feet tall. I can't do it. He would, <laughs> <laughs> he would do this fucking thing. Uh, I'd always go in there dragging ass, and then like something like yeah. that would happen, and then it just felt like two in the afternoon somehow. And you look at your watch, and it was like fucking seven o two in the morning. Do you remember so, when Anthony did live from the compound? He did a. He built a studio in his basement. That's when I was like, going, this is not going to last. This guy's literally building." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's like we're in business selling ice cream and I'm building my own ice cream parlor at home. No, no, Joe, I'm I'm, I'm in this business with you. I knew like like this. They were like, gonna fall apart. You mm -hmm. know what's funny is what did that show and is also what made it great. Yeah, like you know they used to play the oh shit they used to play the, the sorry about that they used no to worries. play the uh, the Clint Eastwood 
uh, yeah. thing. I always thought the theme to that show should have been the wheels on the bus go, go round, round and round. Because it was just <laughs> like, and the thing was, you were on the bus, but you were outside it. You were yeah. hanging. It was you almost like, uh, I always felt like when I went in there, that Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, when Harrison Ford's on the hood and you're grabbing onto the hood <laughs> ornament, trying not to go underneath it. <laughs> and some days you hung on, and then other days, yeah. Except it didn't have the happy ending. You didn't have the whip to hang on to it. You just fucking. Do you remember over. the day we were there and Pat from Munaki threw up in? Um, Are you kidding? Pat me? That, Duffy's that, mouth. That was your idea. Yeah. And then that dude Than Nathaniel came. He was the one that coined it. The baby. I got credit for some reason. I think Dan's voice sounded like me. He came. Oh, up he came up. I've, the, I've been saying it's you. No, your idea it was your idea. You were yeah. like the only thing that could top this. <laughs> For those who didn't see it, it's such a brilliant idea. It was the eggnog drinking contest, and you had to do a double shot like it was bourbon, but it was eggnog, like every 30 seconds. Well, Pat- And the returning champion was Pat from Munaki, who had diabetes <laughs> and lost a toe to it already. <laughs> it was just sitting there. And then he continued <sighs> to drink it. Oh, yeah. To do the bit that you came up with. <sighs> I yeah. mean, there has to be like a... Um, you know when like a broadcaster can get into the sports hall of fame just because you know he never played the game, but he he like you know because of what he added to it. I always thought that Pat Munaki should have been like they should have been like like a like a Chick Hearn, Johnny Most sort of award that he fucking cont- with with his <laughs> his health continued <laughs> to drink. I remember when when people posted that video. <sighs> Everyone was saying, fake, this isn't real. And that made me enjoy it real. I was like, no, that was real. And I was there. <laughs> there was plastic bags all over the ground. Remember, they, they, they put plastic everywhere all over the ground because they knew that people were going to throw up. They had the garbage can ready. And then Pat Duffy leans his head over the edge of the garbage can. And then Pat from Unaki just, here comes. <clears throat> you see him? Uh, and then it keeps coming. It keeps coming. It's like way crazier it was than like Stand a By Me. You just yes. went, and it just <laughs> fucking came out, and then somebody kept shutting it off. And every time, I mean, it was like a- it There looked, it is. Uh, there dude, it is. I can't, I can't you watch can't this. You can't watch this? I, you know, I still can't tell the story. If I tell it in detail, I start gagging. Oh, see, Fear Factor killed all that in me. I never- Dude, I don't I'll, t- I'll tell the one that makes me gag. Cool. I start to gag. Is when there was the dude- <laughs> I can't fucking watch it. <laughs> it was tr- it was tremendous. Do you? Uh, I say I'll say it real quick. Just okay, to go through it. You look, like you're tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> there was a dude who got knocked out. So then, what he did was he started. He puked into a pitcher. He puked into a pitcher, and then he was drinking his own puke, <laughs> trying to make the other people puke. <laughs> <laughs> so then somebody dared this guy who had to take a swig from it and he had like this hipster viking level beard and he (laughs) (laughs) i can't do it you're gonna throw up i can't do it this is like fucking 10 years later he took this viking level swig he just threw it back so he gave himself like kind of like a facial with it and then he puked into the picture i think (laughs) and i remember it was in his beard there's a point in that podcast and in that pocket in that show where i almost puke yeah that's a crazy thing about seeing so going, many people oh, puke. Oh, Bill's going to go. Bill's going to I was like <laughs> hanging on to the fucking table. Yeah, we didn't realize that at the time. But those are some of the greatest moments of our life. You but know, you got to forgive, forgive yourself that because you were in the moment. Oh, yeah. I was feeling like melancholy when I was in Vegas. And I, and I had, you know, I had this, uh, I was sitting in my room smoking a cigar with uh, Bobby Kelly, Rick D'Elia, you know, uh, from the Boston mm-hmm. scene, right? Uh, and we were sitting there and I was looking down at the strip before they came over and I was thinking about the first time I came out there it was right, right before they imploded the sands or the dunes or something and they were starting to implode those old ones and uh, just walking up and down the strip and the Rio was the new hot one uh, uh, casino and just all the great fucking times that I and crazy fucking stories and all that and then just walking around Vegas being old now and seeing all these young people like, and you want to stop them and just be like, dude, if you can, there's any way to take this in, do it. Because, you know, at my age, if I was to continue doing that, you're just a creep. And I, <laughs> I, and I really respect younger people where it's just like, this is their time. 
Let them have it. That's their club. Yeah. Don't be standing in there with your white whiskers and shit. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> listen, trying to listen to their DJ music. Just get the fuck out of there. Let them enjoy their generation's drugs and let them have their fucking stories and just, yeah. Yeah. So, There's no way you could impart that on anyone though. Tell them to soak it up and enjoy it. I had moments where I remember thinking when I was young, like, wow, this is a wild moment. Well, I remember you that night after the, the, uh, the baby bird. We, you were at Caroline's. You were at Caroline's, and I went down there, and you had this that, that fucking grin on your face. You're like, <laughs> you're like, that was great radio. That was great radio. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> and I, I remember. Oh, I told that. I told the whole fucking story. I came home. Nia had just started living with me, and uh, her friend was there, and I was telling them the story of what I saw that day. And I was laying on the ground, crying, laughing, telling. And, and then this guy did this. Do you remember the guy who was fucking, uh, he would do his shot. And when anybody would puke, he would stand over in the corner and not face them. He was facing the corner. So we started calling him Blair Witch. <laughs> Every, <laughs> everybody got there. So I'm crying, laughing, and then gagging as I'm telling the story. And then they weren't laughing, which made it even funnier to me. And then I just remember a friend at one point just was like, she was like, where do they find these people? And then that was that just set me over the top. I was like, I don't know. Just crying, <laughs> laughing. But God bless them. 